Well, it's time to join the Chief Minister for the Friday briefing. Uh, one item you got this week, Mr Bell. Uh, you've been off to see the bigwigs and uh, movers and shakers in London. Yes, th this is the latest in a series of meetings and trips we've had to London to meet senior politicians, uh, business people, uh, journalists, opinion makers generally. And uh, I think incrementally with every visit we've been able to get into a higher calibre of uh, politician in particular. And this time has been very, very successful. It's probably one of the best trips we, we've had. Um, and in particular, that's because we've had a, a much better story to tell this time in relation to FATCA, uh, and this is the automatic exchange of information on tax matters. Uh, and that story has actually been very well received by, by politicians of all parties. I mean, you're the Chief Minister of the Isle of Man, but you don't obviously meet the Prime Minister of Great Britain. It doesn't work like that, does it? Where's, where's no. your level? And it's going up, you say? Well, you, you, you know, I, uh, on, uh, on occasions, you do meet the Prime Minister, the mm -hmm. Chancellor. Um, but at these sort of meetings, they're, they're not the sort of uh, briefings that uh, you would normally have a Prime Minister at. Yeah. Um, so we, we get into whatever level we can. Usually, um, it's people who are advising the senior ministers in uh, their policy development. And in many ways, they're more important than actually seeing the Prime Minister himself. I see the Prime Minister at uh, party conferences and, and other forums, but in this case we, we uh, have met a whole raft from all parties of uh, senior decision makers. So politicians or civil servants or a combination? Well this time it's all been politicians um, uh, and uh, a good range of politicians, but um, we have to recognise that in, in many cases it's the civil servants or the political advisers that uh, are the ones who actually ha help to shape the opinions of the Minister of the Day. And so it's just as important to get in to see them on occasions to make sure they fully understand what the Isle of Man story is than just leaving it to the Minister. I mean, they must be happy. I mean, this is the, the old tax haven thing is going and we're going to get more money staying in the, in the yeah. UK and you're doing what they want, I suppose. I mean, I'm being facetious there, but yes. what, what sort of reaction are you getting? It's been extremely positive. For the first time, right across the board, there has been a recognition that the Isle of Man now is taking a lead there is clear blue water between the island and other jurisdictions and uh, that we are very uh, understanding and responsive to the international debate on tax avoidance and have done our best to uh, respond to that. It also though for the very first time once and for all kills this myth about the Alaman being a secrecy jurisdiction which is in effect a tax haven and this is what we get blamed for. We have repositioned the Alaman in a very positive way away from that uh, label um, and the only thing really that uh, makes the Isle of Man stand out now is that we have a competitive tax rate. We have a zero corporate tax rate, which has been instrumental in the growth of the economy. That we will fight to the end for. Uh, but in terms of the negative uh, comments we've had in the past, we have now moved away from that and it's put us back on the foot front, f f so on the front foot, and uh, we can uh, sell our, our story with some real confidence. But uh, talking to uh, DED Minister Mr Shimon yesterday, he, he held his hands up and said that there will be quite a contraction in, in some parts of yep. the banking business on the Isle of Man while he goes out to China to try and get new yep. business coming in. We have to accept that the, the economy is uh, an evolving creature anyway. Um, we will gain jobs, we will lose jobs. There are two issues at stake currently. One is FATCA and the automatic exchange, which may well lead to a number of jobs uh, leaving the island in some sectors. We are also uh, dealing with the reform of uh, the UK banking system which is the Vickers uh, review and again we were able to argue the case in relation to the Alamans position on that. Now depending on what the outcome of Vickers might be there could be some substantial job losses. Substantial. But there could equally be some opportunities for the island. It's too early to say what those positions might be. Yeah, but substantial, that's hundreds of jobs then. We don't know yet and it would be wrong to, to speculate because uh, we, there is still some distance to go before this UK legislation is finalised. But we have been able to argue the case strongly uh, for the UK to recognise the role that offshore and particularly the Crown Dependency banking system uh, uh, takes and, and the contribution it makes to the City of London. I mean, people will know, I mean, the, the, the businesses will know, and also certain people will know if they're working in that area of business, which is deemed not to be where we want to be going, that their, their number's up eventually and their, their job will disappear. 
Well, again, it depends on, on how this develops. Um, unfortunately, when the debate started on, on the UK reforms, uh, they failed to recognize the role that the Crown dependencies play, and they weren't included at all in the original thinking. Over the last few months, we've been able to, to indicate where they've uh, missed out on the, that consideration, and we are now being part of that uh, debate and will be included in, in uh, the implications of the legislation. But again, it, it is too early. They can't tell us themselves at the moment exactly where this legislation is going to go and what the full impact is. But they have to recognize the Alaman uh, particularly is a retailing uh, banking area and that we have to make special provision for that.